Hello, hello, hello. It's your friend, Sergeant Safety, back again, ready to talk to you about being proactive in safety, working near moving traffics today. And we're going to talk about escape routes and lookouts and the necessity and why we need to have those out while working on the highway. Working there, moving traffic is one of the dangerous, most dangerous spots you could be. So follow me, Sergeant Safety. Today, we're going to talk about why lookouts are necessary, proper lookout procedures, and escape routes. Hey, it's always best to prepare. If you listened to me before, hey, you know I'm all about those five Ps. Prior preparation prevents poor performance. And hey, PPP equals PPP. Piss poor preparation equals piss poor performance. And I want you to all prepare properly so you do not perform poorly. Bam. All right. So. We're gonna talk about some dangers working on the highway. As you see, NIOSHA, National Institute of Occupational Safety Health, between 2003 and 2015, over 1,500 workers died on the highway. 15 workers in the United States die on the highway within that span. That's a total of 121 per year. Can you believe that? 121 per year deaths on the highway. All right, and this is gonna help you stay safe and stay alive so you can go back and dance with your daughters and play catch with your boys or vice versa, whatever it is. Hey, I want you to go home. I want you to be safe. I want you to uh, practice that proper preparation, all right? As you can see by different states what the average is. Here in California, we're sitting at 69 deaths per year average on the highway. That is a lot. I do not want you to go out there and not come home. We all wanna make sure that you come home safe better if not, if not better than what you were out there all right this could happen any given day in a split second this is your office where you work if you're on the highway and you're working this is your office this could happen any moment you have so many different things uh, variations going by you hey you got hazmat trucks hazardous chemicals you have uh, errant drivers looking at their freaking phone all the time. 99% of those drivers are looking at their phone. Look left when you pass them. Look right when you pass them. You'll see them looking at the phone and not at you on the highway. So hey, it can happen any given time, just like it did back in 2017. We had uh, one of the worst accidents in the back to work history. As you can see, we got the van, we got the trailer with the Portage on, and my friend. Ms. Shannon Evans right there in the bottom right corner in the middle picture. Uh, luckily today, she is here because they follow the proper procedures, all right? But following the proper procedures starts by knowing the proper procedures. So that's what we're gonna be talking about today because I do not want you to be in this situation, but it could happen to you, it could happen to me, it definitely happened on uh, to Shannon Evans. And matter of fact, just the other day, Monday, May 18th, 2020, Marin County, we had, I got to commend you, Eric. Uh, so we had an accident on the highway, split second. But those guys were prepared. They were trained. They knew what to do. They had escape routes planned in place. The lookout blew the horn. Everybody beat feet to their escape route and everybody ended up safe, going home. And now they're back to work. Eric, great job. All right, I like what you did. I like your leadership. Keep it up, keep safe. It's just uh, so hard to control what others are doing, right? You have this guy, like this guy right here, he's shaving. You have uh, other people driving neck with their phones glued to their freaking face. You have the mom who has the brats in the back and having to yell at them. You have the hungry guy, I get hungry, and eating on the highway might slip up. Hey, they may, there might be somebody in the, uh, in an altercation over the phone. Who knows? Who knows what's going on in the cars driving next to you uh, on the highway every day? Everybody has their own situation, so we got to make sure that we pay attention to what we do because we have no control of what other motorists do, but we do have control of what we could do to protect ourselves. As you can see, this is an everyday thing, right? Got the old flip phone right there, putting on the lipstick, getting ready for the work day. Who knows what might happen? She might slip up, drop that phone, move that lipstick right across that face. Hey, and then she ends up on the highway uh, and crashing in your office, right? Uh, right here. This was on the highway. These type of materials, who knows who's rigging these up? This material is on the highway, pulled over, took a picture, and this is driving by you every day. 
every day, these materials just like this are driving by you. And sometimes even worse than this. Look, that material is in that trailer is tied down with medical tape. Medical tape is the only thing holding that material down. So good wind, if it's driving good 70, 80 miles an hour, that wind will take that object, throw it across the, um, onto your office, hey, and you'll have a potential struck by, right? Hey, if you haven't noticed, what happened to that wheel? They must have not done a pre-inspection of their trailer, right? Make sure we do our pre-inspections of trailers. But hey, that wheel came off, picked up velocity, looking for you in your office, gonna take you out in that chest, right? So we gotta make sure we're aware of our surroundings, we know what we're getting ourselves into, do a good hazard analysis, and whatever you do, do not get complacent. Complacency kills, all right? And I want you to make it home safe and sound. Lookout, so here's some little bit of rules on lookouts. So these are when lookouts are necessary. I'm gonna start off by this. In our operation, back to work operations, lookouts are always necessary. But this is what Department of Transportation's uh, Chapter 8 Protection of Workers says on lookouts. Lookouts are necessary, or uh, may exist in the, when these uh, conditions arise, right? When we have a posted speed limit of 55 or more, basically everywhere on the freaking highway, right? Uh, when we have workers without physical protection, we're out there working, we're doing things usually without physical protection, right? So um, if you do have physical protection, meaning the guardrail, that's about as much as you can get. And then you have those backups. So hopefully those backups are in place. If not, utilize those guardrails, no matter what, uh, have an identified escape route in mind prior to you getting out of your work van or work truck, whatever it might be. Two or more people working on feet. Hey, on our crews, we have uh, eight people on the feet and we have one supervisor as well. So that's a total of nine, uh, potential of nine plus other crews out there, who knows? So we're gonna always need to have that lookout, right? Working within 30 feet of the moving traffic. Most of the time doing the things that we do, we're working within 30 feet of traffic. Hey, and guess what? We work on our feet. We're on our feet eight hours a day. We're making it happen, right? So these are the uh, are, are why a lookout must and shall be assigned. But in our operation, back to work, you must have a lookout. Lookouts required for any uh, work if a physical barrier is not provided. So again, most of the times we don't have those physical barriers with us. Sometimes we do have the luxury, but in a back to work operation, lookouts are necessary. Other than that, outside operation is based on your SOP, standard operation procedures. Uh, so again, a lookout, their only duty is to look for dangers coming to you and your work area. Look out for their crews. Main thing is look at a, down the road as far as you can. Most vehicles come at that 45 degree angle, get a quick swerve and come right into your work area. So hey, be prepared, don't get complacent talking about complacency lookouts have them rotate supervisors rotate those lookouts lookouts will get in that zone you stand in that uh, next to that highway and you're looking down the road and you just got room 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 vehicle after vehicle going right by you complacency will kick in if you're out there for a good enough time so i recommend by bare minimum Every half hour, rotate the lookout. Put lookouts, put yourself in a safe situation. You gotta look out for yourself as well. Don't put yourself in a dangerous situation. All right, so on this next slide, I'm gonna show you uh, what is wrong. So this is an improper lookout. We have individuals picking trash on the highway right there uh, and, and behind the lookout. So this lookout, he's right up next to the van. He can see right to the right of the van. Uh, he can see the workers in front of him, but he can't see the workers behind him. That, work, that, that lookout needs to be back. Nobody goes past the lookout at all, all right? And where he's looking right now at that position, like I said, he only could do, uh, he only could look right next to the van, right? And there is no vehicle is gonna come and purposely do a column freaking right, right in your work site. No, the stats say they're gonna come at a 45 degree angle down the road. So you see that white semi truck back there? That's where we should be looking. 
and come. We have to keep our eyes peeled and vigilant and eyes on a swivel for everything and anything coming our way. But stats say 45 degree angle. So we're looking way down the road at that white semi, right? There's a lot of things wrong with this picture. Personal protective equipment, not on properly. Of course, uh, bunched up, working near the van. That is a no-go. Working near the van is the most dangerous spot on the highway that you can work because if an air and vehicle comes and collides with your van, your van might, will flip over, just like we seen in the picture earlier with Rocky. And, hey, guess what? Now you're in a caught in between situation. All right? So, hey, we do not work near the van. We do not work behind the spotter. We work in front of the spotter, spread out, proper disbursement. All right? And we got to stay prepared. So proper knowledge. We got to, once we get, before we even get out of that van, we got to make sure we have an escape route just in case. That horn, that horn goes off. Hey, I got to beat feet for my safety. I want to make it home so I can see my sons, right? I want you to make it home so you can see your loved ones. Sergeant Safety is here to teach you how to be safe on the highway. So look out. Those horns. Those horns that you're blowing, do not blow those horns for regular break time, regular communication. The horn will only be blown if an air vehicle is coming your way, all right? Because I don't want to desensitize that horn. You blow that horn to rally up for break time, everybody hears that horn, it desensitizes it. Next time I see an air vehicle, blow the horn, now everybody's going to turn around, go smoke and joke and get ready for their break. Do not want that. The only time the horn is able to be used is when you do a test, blow in the morning, hey, and then when that danger is coming to you and your crews. Look out, do not do anything. You have no other responsibility but looking for errant vehicles and dangers coming to you and your crew. You are the key on this, uh, the, successful, uh, the success of this mission. It's up to you to make sure that your crew stays safe that day. And it might be you, any of you in the van that may have to be on that lookout. Steady rotations, all right? So right here is somewhat of a proper uh, distance away from the van, able to get look at all, all angles, keep their eyes on a swivel. Yeah, the crew's a little bit bunched up right there. He's a uh, uh, good enough feet away from the fog line to make sure he's safe and make sure that you all have escape routes. That's one of the main things on there, having escape routes, all right? We got to know how to identify proper escape routes while we're in the van. So proper escape route. Let me think. Something that could take the blunt force of a vehicle, right? Something that could take the blunt force of whatever object is flying towards me. So if I have to look for something, there may be nothing in this situation. I don't see no escape route. You may need to beat feet all the way as far as, as, far as, way as, as that van as possible, right? and just be feet. But hey, look out for different types of uh, cover. Cover, that's what I'm looking for, is cover. We gotta find something that could take that hit. Big oak tree, right? Something that could take the hit. Guardrails, anytime I see guardrails, be on the other side, the guardrail, because that guardrail will protect you. All right, so, moving on. Uh, working near traffic, like I've been saying, hey, you got to be uh, vigilant of all your surroundings. There's hazardous situations going out, out, going all around you. You have hazmat material driving by you on a daily. You have the drunk drivers by, driving by you on a daily. You have those dope users driving by you on the daily. You have those people fighting with their kids, fighting with their loved ones, eating their hamburger, whatever they're doing. They're distracted in the car, right? They're, most drivers are in a zone while they're in that car. So we got to make sure that we're good to go. I think my slide's messed up. Let me fix that for you real quick. Bam, back at it again, just like that. So anyway, uh, so workers must be aware of all hazards around. Uh, air and vehicles is only one hazard, okay? Oh, that's only one hazard. You got to be a vigilant of your surroundings. Uh, put, put a vehicle behind you, hey, regardless of the size. That van could save a life. Eric, your van saved plenty of lives that day on Monday. That van took the blunt force of the hit. Now, everybody, the situation, from my understanding, they're in operation. Uh, the, the crew members, they had identified proper escape routes. 
The lookout was being vigilant of his surroundings, saw a vehicle swerving over the white line. Next thing you know, the horn goes off. Everybody beat feet with no hesitation to their escape routes. Vehicle impacted the van. Eric, thankfully you're here today. Rocky, you know what I'm talking about uh, because hey, it could be dangerous. You were in a good, uh, in a horrible situation, uh, but it could happen at the blink of an eye. It happens just like that. So have protection, protection vehicles. When you have Department of Transportation with you, hey, they have the strong vehicles. They have the vehicles that will actually be that backup. But if we don't, sometimes we're out there solo. Sometimes that first line of defense is only your van with the trailer. So, hey, good job, Eric. So, uh, chapter eight says, face traffic whenever possible. Now, in our operation, it's kind of hard to face uh, traffic at all times, right? So, I, I, I recommend everybody checking your six. Everybody looking out for everybody's back, all right? It don't matter if you're friends. I don't care if you're from different hoods, different uh, branches, whatever it is. Hey, when we're out in the field, when we're working together, I watch your back, you watch my back. You may save me one time, Sergeant Safety may save you. All right, and like I said at the beginning, lookouts and are, necess uh, are necessary in our operation. Back to works operation, we will always have a lookout. I am not gonna worry about the production when safety's in jeopardy. If I'm sitting there and I constantly wanna produce, 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 and worry about production, hey, then I'm jeopardizing my safety because I'm gonna end up cutting corners. I want you to be safe. I want everybody to end up going home. So look out, will be necessary in our operation. Man, so again, today we covered why lookouts are necessary. We we covered why, uh, what, what's some proper procedures for lookouts um, and proper escape route identification. Okay, but there is one thing that I left out. Uh, most of our operations go with the flow. All right, back against the traffic, go with the flow. Um, but if you do have, if you don't have enough room to properly be dispersed, properly uh, uh, get everybody moving so where you have to be bunched up, uh, you can do the leapfrog method. Set up a sign, drive up, uh, set up sign two, Drop off, drop off some of your crew. Do that landscape and litter abatement beautification while you're going towards sign one. And then the van goes, sets up sign three, drops off the remainder of the crew. They go down to sign two and uh, doing their landscaping and uh, litter abatement beautification projects, right? So the main thing here, being prepared, knowing what to do and keeping yourself safe. All right, that's all I got for you today. Sergeant Safety out.